Thank you, Brent. And it's um, I'm happy to do this for the, for the state of Illinois. Uh, let me uh, share my screen here. <clears throat> let me give you a brief history here of uh, IDOT's communications. Basically, IDOT uh, had been using the same type of radio system, a low band simplex with multiple hardware refresh since the 1950s until it was no longer a viable option. Welcome into the 21st century. The and the Starcom 21 radio network, which is a P25, 7, 800 megahertz statewide trunking system owned by uh, Motorola Solutions and working in conjunction with the Illinois State Police on a master contract with the state of Illinois. It took IDOT uh, approximately four years to migrate over to the Starcom 21 system, bringing 4,500 radios to the system. Uh, once the move to Starcom was completed, IDOT's communications range went from across town to across the state with over 95% coverage. At the conclusion of this migration uh, to the Starcom 21 system, a directive came down to investigate an AVL system with simple telemetry of plow up, plow down, spreader on or off, and road codes and weather observations from our drivers. Uh, the decision was made to go with the solution from Motorola Solutions and CompassCom using the Starcom 21 radio system as a data hall due to uh, the statewide coverage, which no single cellular server could provide or match. And the proposed solution would allow GPS tracking of our vehicles with the Motorola mobile and portables uh, radios. Thus, the pilot program was purchased for our D5 snow and ice fleet and our ETP emergency traffic patrol in the Chicago metro area monitoring their PTO on or off, which was towing vehicles from crash sites or abandoned vehicles on the expressways. The block diagram you see here is basically giving you an indication of how the system for the state of Illinois works. On the left, we're basically showing our truck. The LMU or the location media unit is the basis for everything inside the truck. We have a connection to our spreader controller, which for the state of Illinois is mostly Force America and Dickie John. And we've went ahead and went beyond just spreader on and off. We're now pushing uh, salt rate, salt totals, uh, brine rate, brine totals, and our Force America spreader controllers. If the truck has the sensor, we've been also pushing road and air temperature. Uh, the LMU is actually connected to the radio, and that goes over the Starcom system to the CompassCom server, which is located in the uh, tollways headquarters in Downers Grove. We also have a uh, connection to our plow, the Mercury switch to give us a plow up or plow down, and a Bluetooth connection to the tablet that's in all of our snow plow trucks. And this is where our drivers will enter in road codes and weather observations. And our District 5 unit, our District 5 area in the Paris, Illinois area, we have uh, dash cameras installed as another pilot program. And those interface through the tablet on a cellular connection that accesses uh, our Compass Comp server through an, a, uh, a cloud based service um, that route. Our users access the CompassCom system via the Do It or Department of Innovative Technology or IDOT network or through a uh, public internet with a URL and uh, you know, proper credentials. And they can access this and bring up um, Compass Track and our reporting from any uh, web browser. This is basically a, a demo that I have set up in my office that I used to do some testing with. So you can see we have a radio and our LMU location there. Our LMUs are installed into our trucks. They're actually hid above, a, uh, above the cubby hole inside the trucks or in our new trucks that are being mounted underneath the passenger seat with a metal cover. 
uh, working with our uh, with Motorola Solutions. We've having our um, our truck outfitter who's doing pre-install while they have the truck uh, taken apart, adding everything into it. We've having them also install our, our radio wiring and our GPS wiring as well. So once the trucks arrive at the yard, they're pretty much almost all completely installed. And we just have to move the uh, components over from one truck to another. You can see the, the wires there we've marked for our tilt switch. Um, we have three different types of tilts or three different types of uh, rams that we use in our trucks. Uh, we have the A-frame type one there on the left, and then the older trucks have the square steel stock. We do have some of our newer, bigger trucks that will have a vertical lift, and we have a different switch that we use, which I, a little later on. We have, um, you can see the tilt switch mounted on there on the left. This, we have a configuration that's built with our LMUs, so our drivers or mechanics can bring up the status screen on the tablet and the truck, which will give them a plow indication of either up or down. So we can have our, at the yards, they can calibrate that plow switch by raising the plow approximately four inches off the ground and then adjusting that tilt switch. So we're basically, that is our up down um, cutover point. <clears throat> to get an indication of what we're uh, I was showing on our map, I ran a historical report of the uh, winter storm that we had on February 3rd. This is uh, the southern part of the state, our District 7, 8, 9. Uh, you can see the chevrons are indicating our plow trucks. We have these color coded depending on what the truck is um, doing at the time. So if the plow's down and the spreader's on, they're green. If the plow's up and the spreader's on, they're yellow. And if the plow's down and the spreader's off, they're orange. And if they're blue, plow's up and the spreader's off. And if they're black, the ignition is off. This gives our operations staff a quick glance at the map. They can actually see what their yard is, is doing, spreading or plowing or you know, anything of that sort. So they can have a quick glance and they know exactly what's going on in their area. This is a view of the, a live view of compass track in the Northern part of the state. Uh, this was taken here recently. Mostly all our plows are pretty much showing down. Um, odds are the plows aren't even attached at this time. This is also showing our pickup trucks that we have out here and our traffic trucks. These are uh, being tracked via the radio only. So they're either blue or they're black. And this added feature of being able to have um, the radio connection into us has helped us with uh, uh, an emergency situation because our radios are equipped with an emergency button. So if they, have an emergency, any of our units that are being tracked and push that button, <clears throat> the Compass Com site will actually zoom in to that location and circle it, bring up this uh, pop-up window. And if there's multiple emergencies, they will be listed there as well. Our, this will also set off bells and whistles at our TMC, but this is so we can find our, our people if they're having a problem and we can get the correct response to them. So when this does happen, we end up with bells and whistles at our traffic management center here in Springfield at station one. Uh, it would pop up on the map, which is the second Illinois map there from the left. And it would zoom into that truck and then our dispatchers could contact that driver and determine what kind of help is needed. <clears throat> the new dashboard that CompassCom has brought out that we've been using this winter is the snow dashboard. This is a view of um, November the 15th, I believe. This is our district four area. I just grabbed uh, a district. So this a quick glance, this is giving us live and material reporting all 
on the fly. So our operations staff can look at this and determine what is going on, how much salt is being spread, what's our temperature ranges, because that is the other graph that's going across here. Uh, you can see miles that have been plowed, miles that have been spread, and the current roads and their temperatures. You can select time frames on this anywhere from 8 to 48 hours of looking back time. And this gives you a glance on the, the fleet status side of what trucks are doing at that time frame. And this is updated every minute. The lower half of the screen basically breaks down the groups, which these are our team sections. So we're seeing the amount of salt that spread, uh, pre-wet, which is our brine, distance, and then you're also seeing the road and air temperatures here that would, um, uh, over that time frame, depending on what you choose from up above. The fleet management dashboard, this looks a little cluttered, but this was my login. I have access to everything. So you're seeing what's been going on, miles that have been traveled. Uh, this has been very useful for our operations engineers in the different districts because um, they'll come in on Monday morning and run this dashboard and look back 48 hours. And for their, what they're looking for is basically zero miles being traveled. But if something did happen over the weekend and they didn't know about it, now they have a great way of figuring out what happened and who they need to call to get some answers to why someone was out working over the weekend. The Motorola dashboard is a, another uh, option that we have here. This is strictly for the GPS uh, that's being tracked by our radios. And this also shows alerts as well. Right now on this one, we have a, a geofence alert and this points out on the map exactly where this happened. Uh, these alerts also are set up to go across as an email if needed, and uh, it's very useful for that. This is uh, the geofence for that alert. Basically, this is set up for our day labor operations. Uh, day labor for IDOT, we, uh, they will de deploy multiple assets throughout the state where needed. Uh, this is where a lot of our excavating equipment and our pumps that we have that we will deploy uh, in the event of flooding or whatever that may come up. Once any of these units leaves this geofence, our, our project supervisor gets an email and it identifies that unit. And then he can make for sure that the paperwork is correct. This, if your I's aren't dotted and your T's aren't crossed, you may not get um, money in the end out of this. We also have a geo route that can be created through Compass Com. This is one that was put together for our district one out of Schaumburg. This is a construction site on the I-80 interstate. Uh, we were contractually obligated to provide a radio to a tow truck that was working that area. And we created this geo vent or this geo route in case this truck or this tow truck ever left the area, we would catch an email and then we could get a hold of the correct people and find out why this unit has left the scene. This is a view of the different map services that we are currently using here at IDOT. Uh, on the left, we've turned on the NOAA river gauges. This is something that we use a lot in the springtime, which we're getting close to for flood season. Uh, we also have here, you can see that the counties are, are highlighted and the dark boundaries you are seeing there are the different IDOT districts throughout the state. We're currently working on adding one that will also place the uh, Illinois State Police Districts on here. And that'll be very beneficial for our dispatch people if they have to respond or call in a, an ISP unit to a, a scene because someone didn't answer an emergency call, we'll know which district to contact. 
Um, <clears throat> if we click on any one of these uh, river gauges, it will populate a screen that we can uh, read and see where, what the river level is at that time. The uh, map on the right is our ARWIS site. This is the roadway uh, instrument system, our road weather instrument system. So our operations staff can click those and determine, you know, check road temperatures, wind, precipitation. It's just a, another valuable tool for our, our, our people to use. We also do have weather uh, as a map layer that can be turned on and off and adjusted brightness wise. I just didn't include that on this one. This is a materials report for our one of our, champ, our champagne yard out of District 5 for uh, February 4th. I ran it from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. This gives us basically a list of all the trucks that were out and spreading. We're seeing the average uh, pounds per mile, how much the average pre-wet that was done, and the total salt and total pre-wet that was used. If you look down here, you're seeing um, our Champagne 44 here actually spread zero tons and about 191 pounds of pre-wet. Um, it's hard to see on this, but these icons over here off to the far right, we have a detailed report where we can map it. I did this detailed report on, on that truck. This is going to help us service this because we're seeing that this truck, these are the data points that were actually put into the system sent by the truck, where we're showing that it was in an automatic mode spreading salt, but our seasonal totals never change. This is a very good indication that the auger sensor on that truck has failed. So our lead worker, our OS at that point, our operations supervisor can get a hold of our CMS mechanics and get that taken care of. This is a detailed report on one of the other trucks, the Champagne 52, where you can see how this seasonal total will change and increment as the truck is moving along spreading salt. This is a, uh, if you were to take that data and plot it on the map by clicking that little map icon on the uh, couple screens ago, it will bring up this map and plot exactly where that truck has been traveling and spreading at. You can click on any of the, the icons there to bring up this window and tell you exactly what's going on. So this is a way for our engineers to dig into a storm a little deeper and where are we were spreading our salt and how much and go on from there. This is a uh, our snow ops dashboard, this is where our tablet uh, information for the, the drivers will enter will come across. I'm showing you one for our, our District 5 area for uh, uh, February 3rd. This is our uh, pilot program that we have with our cameras that are out here. I've highlighted some of our dash cameras, which brings up the image on the left, which we can scroll through see what the truck, the driver is seeing on the, out through the dash camera. Uh, the wind, or the icon in the middle is an actual road code that this driver has sent for, um, this is basically Interstate 74, uh, south of Bloomington. And on their driver's observations is the rest of the uh, road codes that's been pushed throughout the state. By clicking on any one of those, it would move you to that map. And this is uh, basically another picture from one of our dash cameras off of a Danville truck, that same time frame going uh, eastbound into Danville on US 150. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> IDOT is also a part of the Clear Roads expanded use of AVL technology. This is some screenshots. I've taken of my iPad during the uh, spring of 2020 when the uh, COVID-19 pandemic was 
uh, hot and heavy. Uh, IDOT was basically involved in uh, dispensing uh, medical supplies throughout the state that we were receiving from FEMA. Uh, all of our districts were driving to Springfield, a specific number of certain trucks. They were coming to the warehouse here. I was using Compass Com to observe the trucks coming in as they were getting within 20 to 30 minutes of our warehouse location, which on the left there is the D1-160 vehicle. That is where the warehouse is actually located at. You can see we've got our District 8 trucks that are leaving on the highway uh, Interstate 55, but our District 9 trucks are coming in. Uh, on the other side, you can see that our District 9 had arrived and District 4 was coming in close. I was able to contact our warehouse staff over the radio and inform them of uh, vehicles, you know, their inbound time frame so they could get the materials closer to the dock waiting for them. This actually helped us get our people in and loaded a lot quicker and back out on the road and return to their destination so the supplies could be then distributed into the multiple counties throughout the district. Another feature that we were pushing here for our um, use of the AVL on uh, non-winter projects was our paint striper. Uh, the switch you're seeing there on the left is a whisker switch. This is also the switch that we'll use on our, um, our vertical snow plows, which go on our large six by six trucks. Uh, it's been a very reliable and useful switch. We took two of these switches to our paint sprayer and attached them to the frame. So when the carriage, the paint carriage was up, it would engage the switch. And when the paint carriage dropped, it would give us our indication that the carriage was down and we were painting, which you're looking at a historical report here. I ran on that striper truck for the uh, October 21st, and you can see where it turned yellow there. We were painting, and when it was blue, it wasn't. And this is something that our traffic people are going to hand over to our GIS group so they can create their own map on exactly where all our roads have gotten painted at and um, what needs to be done or where they need to go to start the next. The other feature that we're working with on this is a deployable assets from our day labor. This is a <clears throat> diesel powered water pump that we will deploy and we are using a, um, that a smaller LMU that is strictly a cellular based. And because we have our internet access to the Compass Comm server, this allows us to push this to our Compass Comm server quite easily. And this is a low cost data package that we are using. So we're able to track these pumps when they've been deployed. This would have also set off a geofence alert as an email that had left our uh, day labor uh, geofence. And we can also, and we got the two views here of just a navigational and then a Google view where you can see exactly where it was. Um, below here, I've run an asset report for that truck, basically when the engine was running, so we can track the hours that that pump was working. Um, this way we can, our, our supervisor over at day labor can track those, those hours. We also have an, an alert set up if it's an extended period of running it will catch an email. So if maintenance needs to be done on a vehicle on one of these pumps, he can contact the people where it's been deployed or dispatch somebody from Springfield to go and maintain it because these are uh, very expensive pumps. If they are not maintained and they burn up, well, we're out a lot of money. So that is pretty much my presentation. <laughs>